Recently, Kopite 7 Kimi revealed what he claims to be the latest and possibly final specifications that Nvidia is considering for the RTX 4080, one of its upcoming graphics cards. According to him, the card's GPU will be the AD103-300-A1 chip, and it is likely to have 9,728FP32 processing cores, known as CUDA cores, and 16GB of GDDR6X SD RAM that runs at 23 gigabits per second, and it will supposedly consume 340 watts of power. The question that this information raises is, how will the RTX 4080 compete against AMD's corresponding card? The card against which the RTX 4080 will likely compete in the consumer market is the RX 7800 XT, which rumors indicate will feature the Navi32 chip and consume 320 watts of power. It will purportedly have 7680 FP32 processing cores, known as arithmetic logic units or ALUs. It must be noted that CUDA cores and ALUs do not have identical structures and therefore cannot be directly compared. Hence, the RX 7800 XT's lowered number of ALUs relative to the RTX 4080's higher number of CUDA cores is not directly indicative of potential differences in performance. Like the RTX 4080, it is purported that AMD's upcoming RX 7800 XT will have 16GB of SD RAM spread across a 256-bit bus, though its SD RAM will be GDDR6 rather than GDDR6X and will run at 20 gigabits per second rather than 23 gigabits per second, purportedly. Hence, whereas the bandwidth of the RTX 4080's SD RAM would be 736 gigabytes per second, that of the RX 7800 XT would be 640 gigabytes per second. However, though the value for the RX 7800 XT is 13% lower, the RX 7800 XT will have 64 megabytes of level 3 cache that's branded as Infinity Cache to supplement its SD RAM's bandwidth. According to AMD, Infinity Cache increases the effective bandwidth of a graphics card, and the effective bandwidth is calculated by multiplying the number of memory channels by 64 and then multiplying the result by the clock rate of the Infinity Cache's Infinity Fabric. However, the values needed to perform these calculations are unknown for the RX 7800 XT, so we will use a bit of guesswork to calculate a value. The effective bandwidths of RX 6000 series cards is up to three times that of the bandwidths of their SD RAM. For example, the bandwidth of the RX 6750 XT's SD RAM is 432GB per second, and its effective bandwidth is 1326GB per second, which is three times greater. Another example is the RX 6950 XT. Its SD RAM's bandwidth is 576GB per second, and its effective bandwidth is 1793GB per second, which is also three times greater. So, the effective bandwidth of the RX 7800 XT could be as high as 1920 gigabytes per second, which is higher than the 736 gigabytes per second of the RTX 4080's SD RAM. It must be noted that the effective bandwidth fluctuates based on what is known as the hit rate of infinity cache. In other words, this value would be the highest possible value, and would not always be reached. As resolution would increase, the likelihood of this value being reached would decrease. So, the RX 7800 XT may hold its own against the RTX 4080 at, say, 1080p, but its comparative performance would decrease at 1440p, and decrease even more at 4K. It must also be noted that RTX 40 series cards will not have level 3 cache to correspond to the infinity cache of the RX 7000 series. However, they will have unusually large amounts of level 2 cache to compensate for this with reports indicating that the RTX 4080 will have 64 megabytes, though it's not known how this will supplement the bandwidths of their SD RAM. Conversely, the RX 7800 XT will purportedly have a traditionally conservative amount of level 2 cache, specifically 3 megabytes. Level 2 cache is local to sets of neighboring processing cores in a GPU, whereas level 3 cache can be accessed by all processing cores, thereby maximizing the usability of the data that it contains. So, the RX 7800 XT may have the upper hand against the RTX 4080 at relatively low resolutions, but may be slower at relatively high resolutions, at least in regard to traditional graphics rendering, which is known as rasterization. To be specific, perhaps the RX 7800 XT will be faster at 1080p and below, equal at 1440p, and slower at 4K. On the other hand, the RTX 4080 will more than likely be better at ray tracing in all conditions, 
due to Nvidia's proprietary hardware known as RT cores. And it will probably also be better at artificially intelligent image upscaling due to Nvidia's proprietary hardware known as Tensor Cores and its proprietary software known as Deep Learning Super Sampling or DLSS. And that's it for this news report on PC gaming hardware. Be sure to thumb this video up, leave some comments below, and hit the subscribe button. Also, please visit and register for an account at eternalgaff.com. Peace out.